I am asking you guys for help. Basically, the article is going to be, which QB would you want moving forward, everything considered? So that includes his age, his talent, and his skill level. Obviously, that's the most important uh, status, but also his contract. So you're taking the contract that he has uh, into account. It would sort of be like trade value, but no yeah. one's trading these guys. That's not the point. Basically, do you want a guy like, let's say, Aaron Rodgers, you know, at the contract he's at, or do you want a Deshaun Watson type? And so I've got like a, a rough draft, and it won't be too deep a dive, Dan, because we're doing this show in under 30 minutes, whether it kills me or not. So we're at seven right now. We got 22 left. It's not that deep. Are you guys ready for that? All right. Well, lead the way. Do it. All right. Um, I'll – start the list like i said if there's any questions on kind of the definitions but basically their current status we can go through kind of the top of them um and you let me know what you think and i tried not to overrate the future too much yes you have these guys indefinitely but in theory you're a gm who could get fired any any year now so you, you can't be uh, going through any terrible seasons why don't i read off my top 10 uh and i'll throw out a question and we'll go from there uh, number one was easy for me. It was Patrick Mahomes. I have Russell Wilson. Number two gave him a little edge over mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson, who's number three, just because Russ has done it year after year after year, and you just feel a little more comfortable with that. Uh, Deshaun Watson at four, and then this is where it started getting really hard for me. I have Carson Wentz at five, Matt Ryan at six, Aaron Rodgers at seven, Kyler Murray taking a swing here at eight, Dak Prescott is number nine. He's got that franchise tag. And number 10 is uh, Baker Mayfield. How about um, we start with you, Dan? Mm. Aaron Rodgers at seven was sort of the reason why I thought of this whole exercise. Like, is Aaron Rodgers still a top five quarterback? I don't think he's played like a top five quarterback very often. Is he even a f top five quarterback of guys you would want moving forward? He's 36 years old. He's under contract for a couple more years, right around where everyone is, $32, $33 million. I, he actually ended up a little higher at number seven than I thought he might be in, in the end. But that was, as, that was as high as I could put him. Is that disrespectful to A-Rod? It is not disrespectful. In fact, you could probably push him down lower. Greg, mm -hmm. you um, once you told us that we were doing this seg, I did a little bit of a research and and we all know that the way the things are set up with the collective bargaining agreement now that teams are at a huge advantage when they hit on a quarterback and he's on that rookie deal. That's, I imagine, um, a major reason why you're doing this, because it really does illuminate that. But it's even crazier um, than you first realize when you really dig into the numbers, the fact that. Um, no quarterback on a deal worth more than $20 million a year has ever won the Super Bowl. It's never happened. And the fact that every time a team signs a superstar quarterback, and you put Russell Wilson, I'd rather start there kind of, Greg, because sure. you, have, you have Russell Wilson at two, and I get it. I certainly understand that Wilson is as durable as any quarterback in the league. He's a superstar. He's a Super Bowl winner. He's been to – two Super Bowls, but since Russell Wilson signed his first post-rookie deal contract in 2015 and then he got another extension in 2019, they've never went further than the divisional playoffs. And to me, all that says is not that Russell Wilson is not a great quarterback or that Aaron Rodgers isn't a potential GOAT-level quarterback, but when you put together an exercise like the value of a quarterback, the way the league is set up, I don't know how you don't put all rookie guys in the top ten because mm. – we history tells us that you can't win a Super Bowl the way things are set up right now financially, which I think, not for nothing, is a major problem for the league. I think that's a garbage stat. I don't I mean, know. If, it's reality, if, though, Wes. If the Falcons' defense doesn't crumble, then that stat doesn't exist because Matt Ryan's got a Super Bowl. I just, that's a, you can play with stats all you want. I, I don't put much stock in that. To me, give me the better quarterback. I don't care about their salaries. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we've been uh, trained on this show to – uh, disregard salary. I mean, I, I get that if you've got like a Nick Foles issue where he's being outplayed and he's got this ballooning paycheck that is just an outrage on paper. But I, I, I struggle a little bit with the exercise in terms of like saying no to a pr premier talent because of their price tag. Um, I'm just not. Because, no, I know you're not, but I'm just like, I don't know why I would. For, can I just say for me, the list got a little 
weird for me from six through ten because I just the way I am, I would take Aaron Rodgers over Matt Ryan any day of the week. Yeah, me too. Um, okay. Uh, I, I, I like th- I like that you're taking a shot on like Kyler Murray, and th- I I wouldn't trust Kyler Murray at eight just because like I feel like I got burned on first year quarterbacks a year ago, and so that's self bias. But then you know, <laughs> uh, in an off season where I'm not going to be um, taking any daddy trips or traveling probably anywhere at all, you've made my off season by putting Baker Mayfield at ten. I don't know <laughs> if I trust it, but um, you won me over with the concept of it. Uh, the list from there gets really weird. Yeah, we'll we'll move into that in a sec. But the Baker thing, Baker was one of the toughest ones to put there because Dan's, you know, everyone's right here. I think a rookie contract's a huge advantage, Most but I think it. you can win without it. it. Not only Matt Ryan, Russell Wilson would have won one. I mean, I don't, Tom, all this would have won one stuff. You either win wait, what about you, Tom Brady? T- Tom yeah, Brady won one. Yeah, but putting way so too much stock in the final score of one game. Wait, this Tom Brady won one. Signing second deals like in year three and stuff. They're Tom, not all going through their whole Tom rookie Brady won one. Tom Brady signed a series, as we talked about in this podcast, of team-friendly deals that allowed I get it, them but he was making more, more than $25 million. To me, that the, these prices are not prohibitive of – being um, a contending team. And I'm like Wes. I mean, ultimately, the contracts weren't like the most massive part of this for me. Russell Wilson, to me, is just such a safe uh, feeling to have him as your quarterback. And and I'm thinking even long term is five or six years because you, you could get fired. You want to win the Super Bowl this year. And so I gave him just a little edge over uh, Lamar and Watson just because of all the times they've been together. To me, it got tougher. Yeah, getting down to Rodgers. I like Matt Ryan. I would actually take Matt Ryan in 2020 just for one year over Rodgers. I think I like Ryan that much. It's just by a little, uh, but he's also two years younger, and uh, Rodgers has some guaranteed money in in the rest of his contract where, you know, who knows? Uh, I would take Ryan. But Baker and then Dak and Kyler, they're 8, 9, 10. That's where it gets really hard. And Can I you clarify Baker- something? Yeah, please. You said for 2020 only. Is that what this list is no, for? No, no. I'm is saying for... to even okay. make my point, like, Ryan is younger and his contract's, like, a little better than Rodgers. But I actually even like Ryan in the immediate present a little better than Rodgers. What about Wentz at five? That one shocked me the most when you sent this list. That that one really kind of I like it. caught me off guard. I still, I don't know. I, I still believe he's he's threading that needle where I've seen enough that I believe in him for the next seven or eight years, uh, even if he's not quite at that very top level. And he's got the advantage of, um, you know, his age that he's still so young. And even though he's making a lot of money, like there aren't that many guys like that in that middle, in that middle tier of quarterbacks, like who are still young. Kind of like Wentz um, at that position. In this exercise, are you saying essentially you are the football czar, you're coming out of this. You've got to explain to a fan base. I had, um, you know, based on money and skill and everything else, my pick of the litter, and I've come out with Matt Ryan as my choice. I just think that you would have um, some feedback on that decision if you came out with him Why? as your quarterback. Matt Ryan's I, great. I, don't, I like Matt Ryan, but, like, out of this whole list, I, there's just mm. literally no way that I would lean on him at this point in his career over some of the people around him. But that's me, and like you know, I my I team I'm, might go five and eleven. I don't know. I guess I'm a I'm a Matt Ryan fan. I mean, I I look at it kind of like which team's fan base should be most happy with their quarterback situation, and part part of the reason, and and let's hit Baker, and then we'll get into the next ten. Uh, but part of the reason is some of these older guys. Like, yeah, you're excited to get Tom Brady, but is that an even better than average you know quarterback situation? The reason I had Baker ten though is because of the age and because he showed enough in his rookie year that I feel like that's enough for me to hold on to that. The fact that he's in his rookie contract now for three more years and he's young and he's shown you something that I would take him just barely, although I'm still kind of like debating this list before I put it out just barely over the next group of players, which is Matthew Stafford who could have been higher Kirk cousins Jimmy Garoppolo are the next uh, three on the list, 11, 12, 13. And those are guys who are still basically in the middle of their prime. To me, Baker's upside, and then he actually showed you something on the field his rookie year as as, as up and down as his second year was that I can hold on to that and, and feel like like much brighter days are ahead. Yeah, I'm in the, on the based ahead. off the rookie year. I'm based off the rookie year, I feel that for sure. I would say it was a little – 
up and down is generous for Baker's second year. That's fair. But, but I don't disagree that he sh- he flashed enough as a rookie, and Freddie Kitchens was obviously a disaster. Sure. Yeah, I think the coaching um, staff was on, like, a deep-based psilocybin trip <laughs> so from kinda, September on. Yeah, so you kind of give him a, a little bit of a mulligan here and then see what's happening year three. So there's a projection there that I like, get. Like, would you rather have him or Stafford or – who, I'd who rather have him than Dak. I mean, Dak's going to get paid big time. And who do you think's a better quarterback talent, Dak or Baker Mayfield? I think it's Baker. I, I, Dak is more reliable and consistent to me. But for upside, the ability to make all the throws and make them well, give me Baker. I mean, I think a little bit. Like, There's the Baker personality side, which might not fit with some teams. But let's say that that got cleaned up and you put Baker on the Patriots this year. And in an organization that can just totally foster and grow him, I mean, I'd take him over a bunch of people based on mm. age and all the other stuff. Dak, Dak, I'd feel the same way, though. I've seen enough. I don't think he's had, like, the best coaching in the world. It, you're right, uh, Wes, as I'm thinking about this. I mean, yeah, you're, you've got the franchise tag next year. You're going to have to give him a huge contract. But most of these guys are on similar-ish contracts. Stafford's deal is actually so team-friendly. I, I gave him a little bit of an edge and that's uh, worth thinking about. I'll, let me run through the, the next uh, list. It's, it's Stafford at 11, Cousins 12, Jimmy Garoppolo at 13, and then it gets really hard. Drew Brees is 14. He's on that one, essentially a one-year guaranteed, but it's a two-year deal. Sam Darnold is at 15 in the middle of all these old guys. Ben Roethlisberger, 16. Tom Brady, 17. And then Jared Goff, Derek Carr and Ryan Tannehill wrap up uh, the top 20. And the the old guys was tough to figure out what to do with your like, would you rather have Breeze and Brady like right now or Sam Darnold? I, I know it seems like an obvious answer that it, that Sam Darnold's the answer. But I know that Breeze, I think that Breeze is going to give you a chance to win a title like right now. And I, I think that Brady is going to give you an advantage. And I, I don't know if Darnold's going to do that or not. Ever. I'm, I'm sort of confused why Darnold's so much higher than other young quarterbacks who have not proven to be even average. What do you mean? To like this he, point. He should be. He should you have be him three top. spots higher than Jared Goff, who took his team to the Super Bowl. You have him nine spots higher than Josh Allen. Mm. Um 11 spots, 12 spots higher than Dwayne Haskins. I get that. Um, uh, to me, I, why why is Sam Darnold so separate from all the other young, unproven quarterbacks? Because I'm afraid of Dan, Dan's reaction, honestly. <laughs> no, he was a guy I thought, like, I could get grief for being too high the other way. Here, here's your answer, though. Like, because he's younger, first of all. He's, like, a, a lot younger. And the skill set, when you just – when you see him – the good things that he does, you can see why people are in love with him. Um, and whereas those other young guys, Goff, I, I've seen enough that like that middle tier Goff, Carr, and Tannehill, that's not really where I would want to be as a GM because I think then you're you're in the middle. Whereas Darnold's a little more boom or bust right now. You don't know if he's – but I think there's a better chance for him to climb high than, than Goff. I see this as – a fundamental flaw with with the list that you have, Greg, is that if you're going to put Baker at 10 and bank on his first year and then you're going to bury Josh Allen wherever you have him uh, because he's been inconsistent, which Baker has as well, only Allen's had a, some team success, um, it seems like those guys are just too spread apart. And either Allen's got to come up uh, or or Baker to me has to go down or – what I would do personally is kind of put them move uh, Allen up Baker down and keep uh, Darnold right in the middle and have them all kind of a little closer together. It seems a little odd that Allen is so far down and Baker so far up. Allen is just my evaluation that I don't want any part of him. I wouldn't Which want I think him. like anyone who's listened to the show last right. season gets that he's not your favorite of the young like, guys. I don't have to give him credit that he had an up year to me. It's not like who's had the best career so far. It's like, who would you want to be your quarterback? And my feeling, and until I see much more, is that Josh Allen is like a best case scenario headed straight for the middle. And All right. I, I, and I don't a, want I don't want it's that. a fundamentally yeah, human exercise, so that makes sense. But you could argue that you're overlooking how, you know, terrible Mayfield is for was for stretches <laughs> last year, while not overlooking Allen. 
uh, for the same foibles that he had at times. I I get it, but I think Baker played better than Josh Allen last year. I stop. I Come I, I really do. No I, way. I I really like Josh Allen. You worked around like they worked around him, um, but yeah, they really of, worked around him in that Cowboys game. He, sure, he he had some he had some good games and everything. Right, but, but you're acting like they don't exist. I'm acting like it, you're, are you going to get 16 of them from a guy that that can't shoot straight? You don't and get that, 16 of them out of any quarterback. Like like that's fair, but like, are you ever going to get him to be a top eight to ten quarterback? That's why like Darnold was tough for me because. If you just looked at the numbers, you know, if you looked at the quarterback rating and the PFF rating and some of the advanced stats, he's one of the worst quarterbacks, you know, in the NFL. And there's not a long history. In fact, there's almost no um, history. Pro fo- you know, Football Perspective did something on that someone with his numbers in terms of yards per attempt and some of these other numbers, having the two first years that he have has almost never become a top shelf quarterback. I think and, I, that's why I think that I will not argue that he should be higher. I, I could see the other side that he should be lower. But I think, and you guys talk about this all the time, um, that you shouldn't base things just off stats and you should you should trust right. your eye, as Wes says. And That's why you, I have him 15. No, I know. That's what I think it's a good spot for him. I think with Darnold that if you are watching these Jets games and you're watching the organization that he's essentially trapped with, um, he has been hurt a lot by the surroundings – by the skill t- level, which is bad, the coaching, which has been shaky, bad luck with the mono. And I think if you watch the games, there are moments where he is flashed, where you wonder if he was drafted into a better situation. Let's say he went to Kansas City, whether he is a guy that's seen as like a young star. I really, I mean, and I'm saying that you could say, oh, Dan, you're being a homer. Um, what I'm saying is, is that I don't know if Darnold's ever going to be any good with the Jets. But I do believe that if he was in a better situation, that he could be a real uh, Pro Bowl level guy. Um, but because of the way the first two years have gone, he's very murky. It makes total sense to me that he would kind of be uh, in this type of realm for you on this list. I, th- I think people are a little too down on Baker's season. Like, for instance, Pro Football Focus had him 18th. He had him right behind Carson Wentz, right ahead of uh, Philip Rivers last year. That doesn't seem that crazy to me on a game to game basis. I think like people got so ba- so wrapped up in the uh, expectations and he had the a terrible field season and the attention that he was so he was like not great. But I I think he was. I, it doesn't surprise me that they had him 10, 15 spots ahead of Josh Allen. That they had him ten spots ahead of. Sam I don't Darnold think he was better year. than Josh Allen last year. I think he was worse than Josh Allen, and PFF can take a hike. Well, I mean, but from another <laughs> angle, in terms of building a team, <laughs> why would you not take Josh Allen, Love Darnold, it, <laughs> Baker, any okay. of the younger guys over? Um, I mean, I don't know how long you're projecting this team to exist, but although, although I could sell tickets with Tom Brady and Drew Brees, you know, it's 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 a Philip Rivers Colts situation. It's a band aid to get you to the next draft or hey. maybe the draft after that. I would go younger guy with potential, which would be Darnold. I mean, t- I think Dan has a good point that you're stuck watching these young guys on these these disorganized, you know, troubled franchises that, yes, they should separate and show the skill set no matter what the surrounding is. But, I mean, like, if we're going to kill Baker for last year and look at completely different from his rookie season, then we're not looking at the entire picture. And I, the same goes for Darnold. I mean... Young quarterbacks are not mavericks to do it all on their own, and Baker that sh- proved that last year. And you're, if you're if you're in a total chaos chaotic soup for 16 games, it's going to show. Hey, uh, Greg, you got about four minutes, buddy. I know, I checked. That that's fine. We, we've gotten through the big stuff. The rest of the list, just for the listeners, Daniel Jones at 21, Philip Rivers, who I do think I should move down. I I agree with you guys. Um, at 22, Gardner Minshew at 23, Josh Allen 24. Teddy's at 25, Andy Dalton, who is under contract, 26, Haskins, Foles, Fitzpatrick, Brissett, Tyrod. Then it gets ugly, and, and I why throw on, Why is Drew Locke at 32? I don't Drew understand Drew Locke at 32. That. Why is Drew Locke at 32, and you've got demonstrated backups ahead of him? He has yet to I don't to know. Because if here, – here's part of the reason why. Like, when you ask how far am I going into the future – like if I'm in this team, if I'm putting Drew Lock out there and he stinks, 
and you're four and 12, it's like with this team, I think like you could be fired in that situation. Like, I don't know if he's ever going to be as good as football as Fitzpatrick. So why take a demonstrated mediocrity over an unknown? Like to me, I'm philosophically opposed to that in every way. If, like lock if, over Tyrod Taylor in a second for me, just based yeah, on, on why not, you know? Sure. If the, if, but if the, uh, if the unknown is something you've kind of, inve- you haven't seen anything from and you have no reason to think. Yeah. Cause that they're better. at least there's a percentage chance he's going to lead me to the playoffs. Whereas, I mean, I'm not taking Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tyrod Taylor above. That, that's fair. Them. Maybe lock should be like a, a little bit higher uh, than those guys. Hey, but again, really, this exercise yeah. is like who you would pick. If any, if you were a GM and list. you take anyone Here's after, the thing, like lock, like sweating. He's, what is this? He's got list? one eye on the clock. I know, I'm loving this. This is why I wanted to do the show with you guys, so you would go crazy on it. Uh, I'm not trying to like provoke react. It really is what I would do. Like Tyrod Taylor is making five million dollars this year. I guess I look at it in the case five million of, too much. Put it this way: if Drew Lock, <laughs> if Drew Lock has Tyrod this, Taylor's this career. That will be beating the odds. The odds are that he's going to have You're looking a, a at it worse all career. wrong. Yeah, who cares about that? Like, all I want is does <laughs> does he have any chance of being the answer? And Tyrod Taylor has none. I guess for now, my my thought of Drew Locke is he has no better chance than an average second round pick, maybe a worse than average chance. And to me, well, he's it, mo- it, he's more it's a pretty low talented chance. than a than a typical second round pick. Like you can see the traits are there. He has the talent. He didn't embarrass himself in his mm. first few games as a starter. Like, I just don't get that. If you have any chance whatsoever of being the answer, because all that matters is being the answer. And well, Tyrod it's not Taylor all that matters. I mean, yes, it is. You want to keep That's your job. That's the only thing that matters at quarterback. Are Nick you the Foles, answer? Nick Foles is 28th on that list. He was the answer, that, the answer to win the Super Bowl in like the greatest game of his life. So I'm saying right. With the there are other values you can have at quarterback. And surrounding talent, he had the, the month of his life. That's gone. You now, guys is, should you guys should it, combine on a list and then crib yes. off the list that Dan and I have concocted um, currently during the show <laughs> together. Um, Greg, circling back to the beginning of the conversation, I know uh, we're up, we're up against a time level, yeah. time wise. But uh, just looking according to Spot Rack, um, Tom Brady never was more than twenty million on the books for the Patriots. In fact, until this year, I should say he was twenty three million uh, in total cash. He was always under twenty. And to find it since the collective bargaining agreement uh, went into effect in the two thousand twelve season. That's in cash, though. That's not cap space. At one point, he had the highest cap figure in the league, 2010. But that was a long time ago. Um, Since 2012 and the CBA went into effect, only one quarterback has won it on a second contract. Eli Manning against your Pats. Now, Wes, you, you could say that doesn't matter. At what point does that become a number that does matter to you? Because if it's if it's happened uh hasn't happened since the cba and it's been eight years how long before that becomes a trend and to that point if this continues to be a situation where teams pay quarterbacks a massive amount of money when they become stars and they never win could it become a situation the way like the steelers handle wide receivers where they just they hold on to a quarterback and then they let him go because they see that the model doesn't work to give that guy a huge percentage of the cap. I know it sounds crazy, but we need to see some evidence that this works under the current um, uh, salary cap in this league. You're asking me the question. My answer is it's never going to matter to me because the, the stat is flawed. It's just terribly flawed. So Jimmy Garoppolo is leading for three quarters last year. He can have a bad game and if his defense holds against Patrick Mahomes, the stat right. is all of a sudden out the window. It doesn't make it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't like the stat. It doesn't matter to me at all, and it never will matter to me. I, I look more at like which yeah, but teams. then like to that point, just one thing was to that point. When people say, and I, I think a lot of people have been like, oh well, Joe Montana never lost the Super Bowl, and that's why he's the best quarterback. And it's like, oh yeah, but if this player didn't drop an interception, that's what sports is. That stuff happens all the time. In right, sports. but you don't want general managers making decisions off of what fans are talking about. It's not what fans are talking about. It's just the reality that it's not happening, and it well, hasn't I would, happened. I would base it more on the rec- like which teams are making the playoffs, which teams are w- getting buys, which teams are getting 12 wins, and I, I would have to go do a deep dive. But to me, tons and tons of the qu- – a high percentage of those teams are led by quarterbacks on their second, third contracts, and the fact that they haven't like gotten over the finish line t- is to me just kind of like a fluke. 
I mean, but Dan, I, Dan, I Dan let's throw that. it. Let's throw it to the Jets. Let's say Darnold has a great third year. Let's not. Well, just no. But like, are you like, are you going to cling to this? We went so this, far over. I'm are you going to cling to this nugget because you don't want Sam Darnold suddenly paid a second contract because? Like history tells us in theory that they those quarterbacks aren't winning Super Bowls. So far, history tells us. No, of course I want Darnold on my team. History tells us that it's really difficult to win a Super Bowl when you have to give that much amount of your cap to a star quarterback. That's all I'm saying. Why and is it so much harder to I don't know. To me, if you've made it to the Super Bowl, that's like ninety eight percent as impressive as winning a Super Bowl. Like you've made it with an expensive quarterback. That means you're good. The, well, okay, but but listen. The only reason I bring it up is because for this purposes of this exercise yeah. and defining a value to a quarterback, I believe that the quarterback on the rookie contract is insanely valuable in this league based on what we've seen since the CBA came in, and that's it. And I'm not saying I would not they want Sam Darnold on my team adv- or anything. I mean, else. it's a so short-term well. luxury that you that you kind of walk into beyond your control if that rookie hits, but then you're going to have to deal with the same pressures that everyone else with a successful quarterback deals with. And, then the, teams are, and, then, and then the teams with a younger quarterback have the advantage in the league, which I, I maybe there's some type of fix in the future if this be, does become a long-term thing where you get a little cap relief for keeping your own in-house guy. I don't know, but it's been something that I, I've seen as a potential issue in the league because you always want the quarterback to stay with the team, almost always. Uh, but if it's leading I, to a competitive disadvantage ultimately, then there's something wrong with that. I think it's I think it's overrated also because your next two guys usually take up more space on the cap than your quarterback anyways. So it's like it's a, your your top defensive end, let's say, and your top offensive lineman, like those guys add up to more than a quarterback. So it's it's about like how you build a team. Like the quarterback doesn't seem like it's outsized on the cap. I think it's it's fluky. We've gone way over, but it is the reason why Baker and Kyler are up there in the top 10 because they're on those rookie deals and they've already shown that they can play. The other guys on the rookie deals, I don't know if they're champion, you know, what their championship. I'd put Kyler is. higher, by the way, but, that, you know, well, we're, out of, we're out of time. I am going to move some of these around because you guys, Locke does deserve <laughs> to be higher. I, I didn't put, a, put lot a lot of, of uh, uh, em- emphasis, emphasis on the, on the analyst. analyst. Josh, Josh Allen, Allen maybe a little up. up. I'll Greg, put lock luck. number one and watch this article go <laughs> off into the skies. That's how you do it. All right. When is it going up, Greg? I think it got pushed back. It was supposed to be. It's now Friday. <laughs> so, you know, we really teased this out. It's All a right, good pod so seg. Come the end of the week. Check it out. NFL.com slash Rosenthal. And see if any of this conversation has led to changes in how he sees the landscape of professional football. Thank you for listening to the Around the NFL podcast presented by Intuit QuickBooks. Thank you, Intuit QuickBooks, for your support. We'll never forget it. The <laughs> official sponsor of the NFL, Dan Hansis, signing off for the Quiet Storm, the Mailman, the Boston, Ricky behind the glass. Till Wednesday. <laughs>